This is my story, a story about a journey into the world of sprint sled dogs, which is far bigger and far more exciting than I could have ever dreamed of. From South America to Australia to England and Europe and all over North America, people from all walks of life are discovering that they can race dogs on dirt, on snow, in small teams of one to two dogs, large teams of eight to 14 dogs. People are racing locally in their clubs and they're working to get all the way to the world championship. I got into dog powered sports when I saw my neighbor, Michael Wason, being pulled by three wired haired pointers on snow. And I thought, I definitely want to do that. I thought I needed a great sled dog. One that was good in the snow and loved to pull. So I went on the internet and looked for the most beautiful Siberian Husky I could find, and that's how I got missed. Five, four, three, two, one. I got it. Let's go. It's a really tough moment when you have hopes and dreams and you're in this sport and you realize your dog's not that into it. You didn't get the right dog. I got it. No, that's the wrong way. Let's go. And I was pretty frustrated. I had already committed a couple years to this project. Training is, uh, shouldn't always be perfect. It should be about making mistakes at home so you don't have to do it at a race. Poppy loved running with Quinny. And in fact, Poppy's the kind of dog who would look over at Quinn while they're racing and like almost say something in his ear like, let's go faster, let's go faster. Training runs all of a sudden became worse. And it was incredible having, I thought I had Ferraris. I knew I had Ferraris. They were, I could see them. They were working so well together. We had an awesome season and were nearly undefeated leading up to the World Championship. So we went into Alaska for the 2013 World Championship pretty excited. One of my mentors, who was a previous medalist, took me aside and said, you have a chance at the podium in the two dog race. And so I went in that race, really gunning for top three, and knowing that I was gonna have to go up against the best in the world. But I thought, hey, I've got the fastest dogs in the world. We have a chance. We entered every single event, all five Nordic events. Things didn't really go as well as I had hoped. In our very first World Championship race, Quinny and Poppy and I were passed three times. We saw amazing skiers with amazing dogs blow right by us. We had been dominating our races. We weren't used to getting passed, and these guys were averaging 22 miles per hour over six miles. We couldn't compete with the Europeans. And that after all that, we actually, I got the wrong dogs again. So I went to the 2015 Winter World Championships in Germany and the 2015 Dryland World Championships in Canada. Not so much to race. I really went to learn as much as I could, to talk to the best of the best, to spend a lot of time in conversation, figuring out what it is that makes them successful. My advice is to have fun. Uh, work hard with the dogs, uh, be patient, keep you and the dog healthy, and uh, give the dogs a lot of love. When you're running a race, your dogs, they don't know if you come first or you come last. They just want to have a good run, right? Yeah, as long as you come back smiling, you know, it's a good run. No matter what level you do it, whether you're a recreational person or you're trying to win a big, important race. Dog mushing is such a wonderful thing that is such an important part of life. I am in awe of the relationship between people and dogs. I think that when that is done properly, it makes us both the best we can be.